In this series, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to strip away all the complexity and hard graft and teach you how to cook amazing food standing on your head. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. From the kitchen novice to the budding chef, I'm going to give you the confidence, the recipes, and the insider knowledge to make you a much better cook. Slice round. Wasting nothing. I made my name cooking in some of the world's most demanding kitchens. It's nice. You make look at the full service. Yeah. In my restaurants, I expect perfection. Every plate has to be worthy of a Michelin star. And every time you make that, you taste it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day it changes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you some simple and accessible recipes for fantastic food that you can easily cook at home. Mm. Incredible. I'll be holding you by the hand. Just getting better and better and better. Teaching you everything from incredible stress-free dishes, real fast food, and my ultimate feast recipes. This is the only cookery course you'll ever need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, this is my ultimate food on a budget. As a chef, I know it's not what you spend on ingredients, but results on the plate that count. Using cheap cuts and leftovers, and working them hard in the kitchen gives you food on a budget that tastes a million bucks. And I'm gonna show you how. First up, my flavor-packed lamb with fried bread. Whether I'm cooking high-end dishes or rustic dishes, trust me, it all has to be impressive. So this lamb dish proves that you don't have to spend a fortune to create delicious food. First off, put the pan on. This is a lamb steak, and it's cut just above the leg, just here, because you can see that delicious bone running through the center. And that's full of marrow, so that just gives the lamb a nice added sweet flavor. Just take your knife, cut through each end. This stops the lamb steak from buckling, so therefore it cooks evenly and colors beautifully. Salt and pepper. Lamb needs quite a lot of help with the pepper, so be quite generous with the pepper. And just pat that down. The pan's just starting to smoke on the outside. Now put the oil in. Get that pan really nice and hot, because this is a cheap cut, so I'm depending on the colour of the lamb steak to really sort of impart a lot of flavour. That's the noise you want to hear. If you can't hear that noise, don't drop the steak in. Put a little bit of garlic in there. Not chopped garlic. Just whole cloves of garlic, and lightly crushed. Don't even waste time peeling them. In tongs, lift up. That bit of fat around the back, that's at the top of the leg. Tilt the pan and let all that fat render. Rendering is a chef's term. That means melting the fat. It works brilliantly when you're cooking a ribeye as well. Turn it over. Look at that colour there. Beautiful. Now it looks like an expensive cut, and we've got that nice, even sear all over. As it's cooking, just tilt the pan and baste. And basting the lamb steak, just means you're sort of adding all that nice scented garlic olive oil back into the lamb. Beautiful. Now take the lamb out and let the lamb rest. Beautiful. Now for the perfect rustic crouton. So this bread's quite firm, a couple of days old. Just slice it straight down the center. Dice it up. Put it into a bowl. Season it beautifully. From there, I'm going to add some milk. Sounds strange adding milk to a crouton, but it just gives it that nice, rich, creamy texture. And just let that milk sort of absorb into the bread. While that's soaking, I'm going to make the dressing. Go back to that initial garlic that was in the pan. Look at that. Beautiful into the pest and mortar. Anchovies. Anchovies go brilliantly well with lamb. I want that nice, salty, vinegary flavor and a bit of kick. Some capers, the little baby cats, very sweet. Now, just pound that to a nice paste. That smells incredible. Next, some Dijon mustard. A nice teaspoon and a half in. A little bit of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons, and then our extra virgin olive oil. Now, it's got that heat in there. It's got that nice roasted garlic, a real hearty, chunky vinaigrette that sort of seeps into that lamb. Some fresh parsley. Crunch up the parsley. 
delicious flavour. Parsley in. Nice. Now, get your pan hot for the croutons. Olive oil in the pan. Grab the croutons and squeeze all that excess milk out. Not too hard. I don't want them dry. And in. And then just fry them. And the milk inside these croutons give it a nice, spongy, creamy, delicious flavour. That's the colour I want. Nice. Now, take them out and lightly drain them. A little bit of kitchen roll onto the board, out. And plate them. Just take this amazing vinaigrette and spread it. Get those croutons. Listen to them, like little boulders hitting the plate. The lamb, sit that on. Next one, on. The rest of the croutons, on. I use all those little bits. And my chef in Paris would kill me right now if you saw me using those, because they're the ugly scraps that customers should never see, but, but they're the best bits. Croutons on, and then just drop that sauce on all those little bits of the lamb. And there, that is a perfect way of taking a cheap cut into the Premier League of dishes. Stunning food doesn't have to be complicated. Keeping it simple produces amazing results and keeps costs down. Here are three more great easy dishes that don't cost the earth but taste absolutely incredible. Starting with roasted mackerel with garlic and paprika. First, make a spicy paste by crushing garlic in a pestle and mortar, along with paprika, sea salt, and olive oil. Spoon the paste onto fillets of mackerel, a great inexpensive oily fish that's really healthy, and leave to marinade. When ready to eat, put the mackerel fillets on a baking tray, skin side up, season, and roast in a hot oven. Next, make a tangy potato salad. For the dressing, mix Dijon mustard, white wine vinegar, olive oil, and saffron and whisk until blended. Boil new potatoes in salted water. Drain and lightly crush. Add sliced spring onion and spoon in the vinaigrette. To serve, top the potato salad with the roasted mackerel and drizzle with more vinaigrette. A healthy meal that makes the most of cheap but delicious fish. Stunning roasted mackerel with garlic and paprika. My next brilliant budget dish is pork and prawn balls in aromatic broth. For the pork and prawn balls, in a bowl, add pork mince. Then add finely chopped prawns, Diced ginger and chopped chives. Season and roll into ping pong sized balls. For the broth, heat fresh stock and add star anise, oyster sauce, soy sauce, and sliced ginger. Gently simmer. Fry the pork and prawn balls in a pan until golden. Then transfer to the bubbling broth. Add handfuls of spinach, then serve. Top with finely sliced spring onions. A gorgeous, healthy dish that uses great value ingredients with amazing results. Pork and prawn balls in aromatic broth, ready to eat in under 20 minutes. An incredibly simple recipe that's perfect for using up leftovers. Easy, arancini, delicious golden rice balls. First, chop mozzarella into small cubes. Then take handfuls of leftover risotto, add a cube of mozzarella and fold into a ball around the cheese. This dish is perfect with leftover mushroom risotto, but it's great with any risotto. For the coating, 
prep three bowls, one with flour, one with breadcrumbs, and one with beaten egg. Dip each arancini first into the flour, then the egg wash, and finally, the breadcrumbs. Then in a pan, heat the olive oil and fry the arancini until golden brown. Drain and serve simply with lemon. Easy arancini, a delicious, tempting treat that's great for leftovers and cooks in under 10 minutes. Three quick and easy recipes that give maximum flavor for minimum cost. Fantastic dishes that prove you don't have to spend a fortune to eat amazing food at home. Nice. Next, five more of my 100 tips that'll make cooking in the kitchen easier. First up, a great cheap staple, how to cook the perfect rice. Basmati rice, the king of all rices. Light, fluffy, delicious, and I'm gonna show you how to cook it perfectly. Now, Start off with 400 grams of rice. Rice in, spot on. So what I'm going to do now is just rinse off the dust and the starch. Cold water, always. And just rinse the rice. That stops the rice from becoming clumpy in the pan and allows it to become really nice, light and fluffy once it's cooked. Rice into the pan. Now, to make a plain, fluffy rice exciting, we're going to infuse it. Three cardamom pods, and just get the pods and just pierce them so it allows all that flavour to come out. Cardamom pods, and then star anise. Now, these are beautiful. Whole star anise. It makes it really nice and fragrant. Salt and pepper. A lot easier to season the rice now than it is once it's cooked. You start to break it up when you season it once it's cooked. Now, it's basically one part rice to one and a half part water. 600 mils, always start it off in cold water. Cold water in. Onto the gas. Lid on. Bring it up to the ball as quick as possible and turn it down and let it simmer for eight to 10 minutes. And that's the secret behind cooking great rice. Allow it to steam as it's cooking. Do not lift that lid up. Lid off. Mmm. It smells aromatic. Basically, all the water's absorbed, the rice has doubled in size, and it's nice and light and fluffy. Take the star anise out, the cardamom pods, they all should have risen to the top. Pods out. Take your fork, fluff it through. Basically, it just sort of starts to open everything back up. Once you've forked it through, it becomes really nice and light and fluffy. And there. Uh, that is perfectly cooked rice. Always make the most of your leftovers. Use last night's rice in stir fries, scrambled up with eggs, or it's simple to make a delicious fresh salad. Remember, a good cook wastes nothing. A great tip for stopping potatoes, apples, and avocados from going brown when cut. Simply cover with water and add a squeeze of lemon. The acidity stops the flesh from oxidizing, which is what causes the color to change. Herbs are great for adding flavor without spending a fortune. To keep them at their best, simply place them in a glass of water and they'll stay fresh for up to a week. And if you've got extra herbs left over, save on waste by making an amazing flavored oil. Place washed and dried stems in a bottle, cover with warmed olive oil, then seal and leave to infuse. Great for salads, pastas, and drizzling on veg. This is my ultimate cookery course. 100 recipes to stake your life on. Later, I'll be showing you an incredible spicy sausage rice that costs next to nothing. Bulky, delicious, and incredibly robust. But first, when you're cooking on a budget, you can still eat fantastic meats. Just make sure you're getting the most for your money. Next up, my shopping guide to buying the best hams, salamis, and sausages. <laughs> These fine Italian meats are packed with flavor and a little goes a long way. And nobody knows that better than deli maestro Antonio Saccomani. Uh, born in Italy and uh, start eating Italian food, and I love it. I want to change it for nothing else. That's why I'm fat. <laughs> He's been selling delicious cured meats in the heart of London, Soho, for more than 35 years. This is the best prosciutto 
they come from Italy. This is cured in Parma, because it's Parma ham. Divine. People love it, and uh, it's wonderful. The fat is good because you make the meat sweet. It should be cut thin like this. There is more flavor. You can eat with melon, with figs, with pears, with everything. Any sweet fruit is good. Mm. It's wonderful. You really enjoy it. When you start eating, you can't stop. Wonderful. This is called brisaola. It's a hair-cured beef. It comes from uh, North Italy, Valtellina. It's so different from pork. There's no fat at all. It should be no fat, otherwise it, it tastes greasy. It's good when it's very dry and you slice it thinner. You just eat it like that. Or you can eat with a bit of rocket or you shave some parmesan on top. I love it. A bit of lemon if you like, or olive oil. It's delicious. This is called felino. For me, it's the best salami. Take the name of a little place near Parma, and there's a is country salami. Very nice. It's one of my favorite because it's not too spicy, just meat flavor, just salt and pepper. I love it. I can't resist. Mm. When I take some meat home, I don't need nothing else, especially in the evening. Just meat with a melon or figs or whatever. A few slices of bread, a couple of glasses of wine. That's my meal. You don't need nothing else. You know, you, you're happy. Mm. Antonio's right. Incredible Italian hams and salamis are fantastic in simple salads, sandwiches, or even eaten by themselves. And you don't need much to make an impression. There's an amazing selection of delicious meats from around the world that are great to use in the kitchen. Another simple meaty staple that's perfect for quick, easy suppers with a difference are the exotic regional speciality sausages that have such distinctive tastes and are a million miles from the great British banger. Here are four of my favorites that are definitely worth your money. Chorizo from Spain. These have an incredibly deep red color, are full of smoky spice paprika, and are great for stuffing, stews, and paellas. Merguez from North Africa, made from beef or mutton. These cook super fast because of their long and thin shape and can be used in tagines or served with couscous. Fennel sausages from Italy, made from pork and packed with sweet aniseed flavor fennel seeds. These are perfect with pasta or as a topping on a pizza. Finally, jerk sausages from Jamaica, full of blow your head off scotch bonnet chilies. These are super spicy and great in tangy casseroles or simply sauteed with onions and garlic. Be adventurous with your sausages. Learn about the different flavors and you'll soon be using them to add extra flavor with ease. For dishes that always pack a punch without costing a fortune, simple and cheap delicious ingredients like sausages are great. And you don't need a lot of them to get stunning dishes that taste incredible. So spend your money wisely and you can have amazing midweek meals that don't cost the earth. My next recipe is all about great flavors and it's as cheap and easy to make as it is delicious. Spicy sausage rice. Whatever you're cooking, the secret of making great food is to ensure you lock in every last ounce of flavor in that pan. And this spicy sausage rice does exactly that. Take these spicy sausages and pierce that skin, because I want all that delicious spicy sausage meat out of its casing. And you get more flavor from the sausage when you take them out of the casing. Sausage is ready. Turn on the gas. Bread onion, less acidic than a big white Spanish onion and a lot more flavorsome. A tablespoon of olive oil. A tablespoon only because I want all that fat coming out of the sausages to sort of really help flavor the onions. Onions in. And the onions go in first because you can never rush cooking an onion. It's really important to sort of give them five six minutes in the pan, so you can really start to caramelize them. And now for my pepper. Slice round, wasting nothing. I want to see that sort of little core, those pips in the center. No fine diced pepper. The rice is going to be cooking for 20 minutes, so I want the veg to sort of have texture after it's cooked. Pepper's in, a bit of garlic, two nice cloves. Just slap down, off with the shell. 
garlic in. Now, I want to turn up the gas. Get the pan nice and hot, because the minute that sausage goes in, everything cools down, and you'll end up boiling the peppers and the onions and the garlic. So heat up to maximum, and then just make a well in the center. In. Now, start stirring quickly. And this is where you get so much more bang for your buck out of the sausages, because the skin's off, and the real flavor of that spicy Italian sausage is going to come through. What's great about this recipe is that you can use any type of sausage to get the flavor and the heat you want. I've gone for the spicy Italian, but it's just as good with merguez or chorizo. A teaspoon of paprika in. Give it that really nice smoky flavor. Rice in. And we're going to sort of basically sear the rice. We call it in the kitchen blasting the rice, where we sort of soak the rice for 30 seconds, and it takes on all that flavor. Next, white wine. So the wine sort of deglazes the pan and washes all that flavor from the bottom of the pan into the rice. Stock in, bring it up to the boil, turn it down, and let it simmer. Mm. Double stock to rice. Turn that gas down and let it simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. And just give it the occasional stir. Keep an eye on it. Now, get ready to finish it. Slice spring onions, dice sweet, juicy tomatoes, and roughly chop earthy, flat-leaf parsley. Spring onions in, tomatoes in. Off with the gas. Really important. Otherwise, everything becomes overcooked. Flat-leaf parsley in. But look at the volume in that pan now. That is an amazing way to take spicy Italian sausages to a completely different level. Beautiful. Follow my ultimate cookery course, packed with key lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.